am Jackie Howard. I am the Director of Animal Care at Center for Animal Protection and Education. It's also known as CAPE. CAPE actually stands for Center for Animal Protection and Education. Um, so we do a lot of educational programs um, focusing on um, animal advocacy, um, the organization was started in 1992. We've been around 28 years. Um, we currently have about 46 animals in our care and they will live through their whole lives with CAPE. What makes CAPE special is um, we, we cover a broad spectrum of species. So we have um, a farm sanctuary that was uh, brought here to Grass Valley in um, 2012. Mostly we care for um, farm animals. So we have goats, um, pigs, turkeys, chickens, um, and then we have a whole rescued herd of um, equines. So we have two horses, we have a bunch of burros and donkeys as well. And then we also care for dogs with special needs. Um, so we have an assisted living program that helps dogs who, um, are older and have a series of medical issues and are less likely to be adopted and we pull them out of shelters and place them into foster homes and CAPE covers all of their care costs. So that's pretty special. And then we do just the general adoptions as well, um, general rescues. CAPE specializes in animals with disabilities, uh, special needs, um, treatable medical conditions. So often we work on um, rescuing animals who are in need of medical care. Um, so that being said, we kind of have a different array of ways that we rescue animals. Um, some of them are through partner organizations like American Wild Horse Campaign. We just rescued a burrow from Nevada. Um, so they contacted us and let us know and we kind of partner and work together. Um, other ways, we go to livestock auctions, um, we work with um, open door shelters a lot here locally, and we just kind of find a way to help the animals that are less likely to either thrive or be adopted or, you know, just live out their life without suffering. We have a fun time at the sanctuary. Um, the, the animals have such different personalities. They really are um, quite connected. For, for animals who have completely different histories, it's amazing how much they're bonded now. Um, but they're quite comedic as well, and so a lot of the time it's just about trying to move one animal from one place to another that causes some, um, you know, difficulty because animals do what they choose to do. But um, I think one of the most beautiful parts about working at the sanctuary um, for CAPE is that you're reminded that these animals have emotional attachments to one another. Um, you know, for example, our rescued herd, we have an ex-race horse, we have a, a wild Mustang from BLM, um, we have burrows from different uh, parts of the United States, and then we have donkeys that came from, you know, um, neglect cases or whatever it may be, and they're all so close. They look after one another, they care for one another. If one is not with them, it's, it, it's just this pure example of how animals feel love and attachment towards one another. That's pretty special. One of my favorite things about my job is watching the transformations. Um, when CAPE rescues animals, they're not in the best condition. A lot of them are um, suffering a lot. A lot of them physically don't look well. Um, they're scared. You know, they're um, closed off. They don't necessarily want us to be touching them or anything like that. And to watch them slowly build trust, um, not specifically just towards us, but the other animals, and be able to kind of show their true selves, 
it's so cool. It's such a beautiful thing to watch and experience. And, you know, um, like I said, they all have different stories and histories, but they all just, they just come together and help each other. And um, it, it, it's one of, I think, the most beautiful things I've experienced in my life is watching them go from suffering and in so much pain physically and emotionally to, you know, jumping off of rocks and running around the pastures and being playful. It's such a beautiful thing. Last year, we rescued a horse. His name is Renegade. Um, he was a wild Mustang on BLM land. Um, he actually has a really beautiful story, though. He was adopted and spent most of his life with his one owner. Um, that owner was very ill, and his last dying wish was for Renegade, Renegade to go to a good home. Um, so he spent some time at the Santa Cruz Animal Shelter. They did a great job caring for him. And then he moved to the Cape Animal Sanctuary. Now, when he got here, he was not happy. Um, he put up quite a big fuss. Um, we separate them when they first arrive and get them really comfortable. And then we slowly introduce them to the herd. And um, after our initial vet visits, we realized that um, he has equine Cushing's disease. So it probably related to a lot of his discomfort. Um, so we care for him, we give him a special diet, he gets medications, and we've just slowly watched him turn from kind of this grumpy old man to just this majestic being. And um, the other horse that's at the Cape Animal Sanctuary is an ex race horse named Remy, and they have just become the best of friends. And um, that's pretty cool because, you know, like I said, completely different stories and histories, and for them to come together and just, it, it's an amazing thing to experience. So, some of the bigger difficulties that we go through um, as uh, an animal rescue organization is um, we're always growing. There's always a need. Um, and so we, we work, we're working a lot in 2020 to um, expand our rescue programs. The other difficulty is um, just the, the general understanding of our culture about um, uh, spay and neuter and overpopulation of animals um, and how some things affect another. For example, um, we're, we, I just mentioned we work towards uh, rescuing a burrow in Nevada um, last week and the BLM, so the BLM rounds up wild horses and burrows um, on public land. And this is a tax subsidized, subsidized um, f it's a tax funded program. And so um, these wild horses and burros are moved out of this public land for cattle grazing. And a lot of that cattle is for the meat and dairy industry. So for people to kind of connect that, it's a difficult thing. You know, a lot of people don't know about what's going on with the BLM and the wild horses and burros. And then con connecting that to the food on our plate, um, you know, that's always a constant struggle for us, but um, we are working hard at making it um, accessible and for, for people to really connect the two. I actually grew up in the Central Valley. I. Um, grew up in cowboy capital of the world, and uh, it was a big farming community. I was a meat and potatoes kind of girl. I, you know, was raised with a barbecue on the grill constantly. Um, and then when I was 18, I moved to San Francisco, and that's when things really started to change for me. I began to um, understand the relation between animals that I love and the food on my plate and the voice that I had. Um, it wasn't until much later in um, my life that I went vegan, um, but it's still been about 10 years for me. And I think what's really great now is I get to be vegan, which I recommend to everybody. Um, but at the same time, I also get to advocate for animals. And um, I think when you want to go vegan, it's sometimes difficult to know how to do that. 
and you want to make these changes and you want to advocate for animals, if you're an animal lover and you want to do all of these things, um, for me, it's about taking small steps forward, um, making decisions, living with intention, being able to go to a grocery store and decide how your vote, how your voice reflects animals that you love so much. I spent um, a good portion of 10 years in the restaurant industry. I worked um, towards becoming a vegan chef. That was kind of my goal for a very long time. Once I got to that place, I felt this yearning that um, I needed to be doing more. Um, I wasn't even quite sure at that time what that purpose was. Um, but I knew that just going vegan was not enough for me anymore. Um, flash forward to um, today, I met JP Novick, uh, the executive director of CAPE uh, a couple years ago, and we slowly built this friendship and relationship and I became a part of CAPE. Um, I started doing social media for them and kind of taking a step forward. And then we found out and realized that my true passion is working with animals. Um, so I've worked very hard to um, get here, but I'm really excited about the opportunity to continue advocating for animals. That's pretty special for me. Uh, CAPE also does an educational program called Speaking of Animals. Um, in the 90s, JP Novick, the executive director, um, did a public access show called Speaking of Animals, and she would do all kinds of things. She would um, interview animal rights activists, um, just kind of be on the road talking about animal rights. And um, after a very long hiatus, we've decided to bring it back and I get to be the host, which is really great. And we've done things like um, go into the OR for a spay and neuter surgery. We have um, interviewed some of the animals at Cape Animal Sanctuary. We have taken you on the road for a burrow rescue and a dog rescue and talked about the importance of spay and neuter. Um, all kinds of things, and it's so fun. We are a small team. Um, we have a wonderful group of volunteers that are so invested in our organization. So if you'd like to get involved, uh, you can go to our website at capeanimals.org. Uh, we are also on all social media platforms at Cape Animals. If you'd like to look at adorable animals, every day, definitely follow us on social media. Um, and then we do a ton of educational stuff as well. So be sure to follow along. Hi there. Welcome to Speaking of Animals. I'm your host, Jackie. You know, we get a lot of questions about what it's like to work as an animal caretaker here at the Cape Animal Sanctuary. I'm about to show you. Normally we have some feed to unload. And I just want to give you a pair of boots. They're required for the job and you'll probably need them. And this radio. We've got a big day ahead of us, so let's go. Did I forget something? After the equines are fed, we administer medications. Renegade gets a daily medication to treat his Cushing's disease. We are also providing everyone with a quarterly dewormer right now. So much.
We manage the flies at the sanctuary, but we also need to put on fly masks whenever necessary. Remy, an ex-race horse, also needs to wear a special pair of cushioned boots because he has fragile feet. We check the boots regularly to ensure that they are on properly and that he is comfortable. Every day we clean up manure piles to help with fire safety. This is where your boots come in handy. So we take this big pile and we're going to spread it out in the field. We do body checks every day, checking their body, making sure they're comfortable, checking their eyes, checking their nose. And they've all really begun to trust us. You know, some of them, like Sophie and Vita here, have taken longer. But as you see, they've really warmed up to us. And it's so amazing. It's one of the favorite parts of my job is really gaining the trust of these beautiful animals. Hi, bunny. cleaned every day and fresh straw is put into the barn for all of the goats and the pigs to enjoy. You better not forget to fill up Rudy's second mud puddle. Ready? <laughs> Often at the sanctuary, we have rescued dogs like Belle who are going up for adoption. If you're interested in adopting Belle, you can go to our website. At the end of the day, I spend some time with the beautiful animals here at the Cape Animal Sanctuary, like Stevie, who's blind, and his wonderful mom, Gertie. I take a mental check of the day's tasks. Did I lock all the gates? Did I give everybody their meds? Did I leave fresh water? And if I'm not completely filthy, I probably missed a step. Thank you so much for tuning in this time. Hope to see you soon. Thank you to Stiefel Financial, proudly helping individuals pursue financial goals, businesses and organizations raise and protect capital, and communities offer a higher quality of life. To learn more, visit www.stiefel.com.